Hello everyone. Um, uh, in this session, we will continue the chapter eight that uh, we will continue to uh, explain about the image alignment and image teaching. So last week we already uh, reviewed some of the pairways alignment techniques. So we will continue uh, for the pairways alignment and uh, the other uh, the other uh, the other parts. So. Okay, so in this uh, session, we first, uh, we will talking about the, the robust least squares and ransack. So uh, for the robust least squares, uh, it is preferable to use an M estimator when there are outliers among the correspondence. And uh, usually it in, involves applying a robust penalty function PR to the residual instead of scoring them. So uh, by applying the robust penalty of PR, then we can get the, uh, this equation here. And after we take the derivative of this function with respect to P and set it to zero, then we can get this formula. And where the psi of R equal to uh, P prime of R is the derivative of P and it is called uh, influence function. And if we introduce a weight function of W, uh, we observe that finding the, st the stationary point of uh, the previous equation is equivalent to minimizing the iteratively reweighted least squares or IRLS problem. So uh, we can uh, solve the IRLS problem by, uh, by using the weight function. So uh, then, how to minimize it, we can use this equation that we are having the uh, weight function here. Then the W itself is defined as this equation, where also where the W of norm Ri play the same local weighting rule as sigma i, uh, uh, sigma i inverse square in the previous equation. And this is the uh, some uh, note that the I IRLS algorithm is alternating between computing the influence function W and solving the resulting weighted least square prob problem with a fixed W value. And for the M estimator, uh, can definitely help reduce the influence of outlier in some cases. And usually it's starting with too many outliers will prevent IRLS from converging to the global uh, optimum. And to solving the, uh, this, uh, this uh, issue, there are many, uh, there are uh, other better approach to, to get a better performance when uh, it's starting with too many outliers. <clears throat> so this is one of the two widely approached to handle this problem. The first one called the random sample consensus or RANSEC for the short and least mean of squares or LM LMS. And uh, actually, uh, both of techniques started start by selecting at random a subset of key respondents, which is then used to compute an initial estimate for P. And for the residual of the full set of correspondent R can be compute as follow. So this is uh, uh, how we compute the residual. So this is the estimate map location, and then this is the sense detected feature point. So this is how we compute the residual when we are using this, uh, this part of the RANSEC and then the LMS. So for the RANSEC technique, then uh, counts the number of inlier that are within of the predicted location that is whose uh, the norm of the residual is uh, less than equal of epsilon. So the epsilon value is application dependent, but it is often around one to the three pixels. And for the least mean of the squares, find the median of the, of the uh, residual values here. And the random selection process is repeat as time and the sample set with the largest number of inlier or with the smallest median residual is keep 
as the final solution. So this is uh, the process that we will do repeat as time, and then we will save uh, as a final solution if the we, we got the smallest median residual already. And when the number of measurement is quite large, it may be preferable to only score a subset of the measurement in an, an initial run that select the most plausible hypothesis for additional scoring and selection. And uh, this modification of Fransac call, uh, known as primitive Fransac. So this is uh, any uh, additional type of Fransac that proposed in 2000, 2003, 2003 by Nister. So this is uh, another variant of Fransac called Prosac that it is progressive sample consensus so random sample are initially add, added for the most confident matches, thereby speeding up the processing of finding a statistically likely good of in layer. So this is one of the example of any type of ransack. Okay, so next one, we will talking about the 3D alignment. Previously, we are uh, most, uh, we were talking about the 3D alignment. So this is uh, the 3D alignment part. So instead of aligning a 2D or set 2D set of image feature, so many computer vision applications require the alignment of 3D point. So yeah, many application in image process uh, in computer vision require 3D point. So in the case where 3D transformation are linear in the motion parameters, uh, such as for translation, similarity, affine, regularly squares, can be used. For, for solving this this case, and and yeah, so for the for the this 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 motion parameter, we can use the regular least squares. So, and and therefore the uh, the regular the re regular least square. Uh, the case of rigid Euclidean motion here for the three D can be uh, estimating using this this equation. And this is arise more frequently and often called the absolute or orientation problem. So, uh, and it requires slightly different techniques. So, uh, when when we are using this motion of parameter, we, we can uh, minimize it, such as defined in this equation 8.31. Uh, if only scalar weighting are we are being used, uh, this is as opposed to full 3D point. Uh, the vector centroid of two points cloud C and C0 can be used to estimate the translation. So um, when dealing with only scalar, then the translation can be estimated by using this equation. Uh, we are then left with the problem of estimating the rotation between two set of points. So then we, we are uh, uh, having, the, having a problem for solving this, this two set of points. And that are both center at the origin. So for solving this uh, problem, one commonly used technique is called the orthogonal procaster's uh, algorithm. And, and also in, in for computing the SVD of three times three correlation matrix. So this, the, the correlation matrix uh, obtained by this uh, equation. The rotation of matrix is then obtained by by the rotation is a uh, is a u time v transpose, so we can get the rotation as a follow. This is uh, in a case when scalar weighting are uh, being used. <clears throat> so okay, so in the last part, we already talking about some several uh, image, uh, some several pairwise alignment technique in both of two D and three D. Also, we all already talk about um, how to repose. Uh, so the next stage we are we are we are talking about the image teaching. So, so after we are doing a previous alignment, then we are uh, need to do the stitching, and and actually image teaching algorithm uh, create the high resolution photo mosaic uh, used to produce today's digital maps and uh, satellite photos, and and in in current smartphone it seems like uh, the current standard for the camera because uh, by by using like a, like a, uh, like creating a photo mosaic, we can create like a beautiful ultra wide angle panoramas photo. And if we talk about the originate, uh, 
uh, actually image stitching is originate in the photo photographic community where they use more manually intensive method, method methods based on the survey current control points or manually registered tie points and have long been used to register aerial photos into large scale photo mosaic so this is the original uh, original image stitching and in the early technique work by using like minimizing pixel to pixel dissimilarities and today our, today's algorithm they usually extract a set of feature match them to each other so this is as described in the previous uh, chapter seven so uh, yeah it's slightly changed the the, the algorithm from from previous uh, algorithm with the current algorithm so this is a uh, uh, price equation what then the essential problem in image teaching so this is the 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 answer that as with um, image alignment you must first determine uh, the appropriate mathematical model relating pixel coordinate in one image to pixel coordinate in another so this is a, a, a key for doing image teaching so we need to uh, able to appropriately determine the mathematical model relation relating pixel coordinate from one image to the pixel coordinate for the other image so then okay this is what we are going to uh, uh, learn about the image teaching about how to appropriately mathematic appropriately mathematically uh, a model um, for the first part for the image teaching we will talk about the parametric motion models and this is uh, the the information that before we can register and align image we need to establish uh, the mathematical relations relationship that map pixel coordinate from one image to another um, a variety of such parametric models are possible that there are many uh, possible models from simple to the transform transform to planar perspective model to 3d 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 camera rotation, lens distortion, and mapping to non-planar surfaces. So we can use any far, uh, parametric motion model during the during the estimation. And this is some of the uh, image about the two-dimensional motion models and how they can be used for image teaching. So we can use any types. For example, this this image they use the translation, and then this is they use the affine. And for the perspective, they use some uh, some some process like this one, and then the three D rotation we can use like this one for for stitching the image. So this is some example um, uh, of a image stitching process. We can use either either uh, either method, either parametric motion model that fit to our image and to fit with our code. So we can use the most uh, suitable method for doing the parametric motion model. So this is for the more recent stitching algorithm. They mostly first the extract feature and then match them up often using, and then match them up. And they often using robust techniques such as RANSAC to compute a good set of inliers. So yeah, we need to extract and then in, uh, RANSAC has been shown very a good a performance for a good set of in layer. And then we need to find a comput computation of the homography. That is the solution of the least square fitting problem given pairs of the corresponding feature. So we can compute the final uh, computation homography uh, as defined in this equation. And finally, we can use the iterative least square as described in the previous part for, for optimizing the parameters. Um, this is one of the example from the the application of the image teaching, uh, namely whiteboard or the document scanning. Um, the simplest image teaching application is to stitch together a number of image scans taken on a flatbed scanner. So we uh, we can stitch together and scan them on a flatbed scanner. And uh, suppose we have a large map large map 
or a piece of chills artwork that is too, la too large to fit on your scanner. Uh, one of the one of the easiest way to 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 scan the image is we we take multiple scan of the document, making sure that the, our document is overlapped together, and and by large amount of by large amount, so it's to ensure that there are enough common feature, and then after we make sure that we already scan that scan a document that the document is already overlapped together. Next, take the successive pairs of images that you know overlap, then extra feature, match them up, and then estimate the 2D rigid transform. This is one of the uh, simplest ex example from, for the image teaching. And then we can use the two-point ransack if necessary to find a good set of in layer. Then on a final compositing surface, uh, or align with the first scan, for example, and resemble your image and average them together. So this is uh, so this is the so this is um, uh, the easiest way for the image stitching. But can you see any potential problem with this scam? So this is the answer. Um, this is one of the complication is that the two D rigid transformation is nonlinear. In the trend in the rotation of angle of theta. So you will have to use either non-linearly squares or constant air to be orthonormal, as described in the section 1.1.3. Uh, a bigger problem lies in the pairwise alignment process. As you align more and more pairs, the solution may drift so that it's no longer globally consistent. So uh, the align more and more past than it known is it is it, it will not globally consistent. So in this case, uh, a, a simple process like uh, what we have described before may not be optimal. So then we may need a global optimization problem when dealing with uh, many alignment and then many pairs, then we were uh, talking about this uh, global optimization procedure in the section, in the next session. So this is maybe required to, to further uh, solving this issue if we have, uh, uh, we, if we do align more and then have a more pairs. Um, this, the third one for the image teaching is about the rotational panoramas. This is the most typical case for the panoramic image teaching is when the camera undergoes a pure rotation. So like suppose you standing at the rim of the Grand Canyon relative to distant geometry in the scene, as you snap away, the camera is undergoing a pure rotation, which is equivalently to assuming that all points are very far from the camera or that it's planned at infinity. So um, this is uh, the, the, the example uh, of, the, of, the, of the most typical panoramic uh, image teaching. So this is the, uh, the, the, the image for the pure 3D rotation. This is the form of the homography mapping. It's, par it's particularly simple that, and depends only on the 3D rotation matrix and a focal length. So this is depends only on the 3D rotation metric and a focal length. This is the pure 3D rotation. So if you, are, if you want to do the 3D rotation, it mostly, uh, depend only on the 3D rotation matrix and the focal length. So we need to uh, clearly define these two parameters during the 3D camera rotation. <clears throat> so this is one of the um, uh, further explanation. So by setting T0 and T1 into zero, we can simplify the three time three homography. So then the homography is can be uh, defined as the equation 8.38 where the K is the diagonal, uh, is the simplified camera intrinsic metric that it assuming that uh, CX or CY equal to zero, where uh, indexing the pixel starting from the image center. So this is, we are assuming that image is, uh, the indexing of image will be starting from the image center. And this is by, uh, and also, Based on this condition, this can be written 
can be rewritten as a equation uh, eight point thirty nine when we already in, uh, include the diagonal information, or we can also rewrite as this equation in the eight point forty. So if we given this rep representation, how do we update the rotation matrix to the best aligned to overlapping image? So <clears throat> given, a given a current estimate for the homography H in the previous equation, the best way to update R is to prepend an incremental rotation matrix. So we need to do the incremental rotation matrix R of W to the current estimate. So we need to do incremental rotation to the current estimate. And it can be uh, obtained as this, uh, as this equation. So this is the uh, rotation metric to the current estimate. So we can do incremental rotation as this defined here, where the D is, is, uh, can be obtained as this equation. So we notice that how there is no uh, nice one-to-one -one correspondence between the in entries in the D and the H parameter parameters used in table uh, 8.1 and equation 1.9, 1 1.19, that is this equation. So we gather H based on the table one. Therefore, we can apply the chain rule to the equation, to the equation 8.24 and 8.43, so we can obtain the equation 8.44. So this is uh, after we apply in the general, then we can get this equation. And so previously we already talked about the rotational panorama. That's the step, uh, the, the the step that what we need to do. Like we can do like an incremental rotation metric to the current uh, current rotation, and then finally we can. Uh, updating the equation until the last part, we can apply the chain rule for the equation. <clears throat> and the, the, the next part, we will talking about the gap closing. The, the technique present in this, in this section can be used to estimate a series of rotation matrices and focal length, which can be chained together to create large panoramas. And uh, unfortunately, because of the accumulate errors, this approach will rarely produce a closed 360 panorama. Instead, there will invariably either a gap or overlap. So then because of it's rarely produced 360 panorama, it always have probability that we may have a gap or overlap. So we can solve this problem by matching the first image in the sequence with the last one. Um, the difference between the two rotation metrics Estimate associated with the repeat first indicate the amount of misregistration. So we we will uh, see the difference between the two rotation metric estimate. Yeah. So this is the um, figure of a gap closing. The A is a gap closing is feasible when the focal length is wrong. When this is when the focal length is wrong. So after they um, uh, correct the focal length, then there, there is no more the the feasible uh, feasible uh, gap closing. So we will we will learn about how to uh, make a smooth uh, image stitching by removing the gap closing. Um, Uh, for the next part, we will talking about the one of the application, which is the video summarization and compression. Uh, this is the video stitching the background scene to create a single street image that can be transmitted and used to recreate the background in each frame. So uh, we combine this all of the uh, images so we can we can create a single street image that can be transmitted. So this is the final result that we can create a single split image after the stitching of the many, many, uh, uh, many, many, many image from the video. Um, the next part, uh, we'll be talking about the cylindrical and then spherical coordinate. <clears throat> so an alternative to use 
homographic or 3D motion to align image is first wrap the image into the cylindrical coordinates and then use pure translation model to align them. So this is one of the alternative for homography or for 3D motion. We, we align the image into the cylindrical coordinate and then we do the pure translation after we, we already uh, wrap it into the cylindrical coordinate. Um, unfortunately, this only work if the image are all taken with a level or with a known pill angle. So it's only working with the with the level camera or known tilt angle. <clears throat> so we assume that for now there is a camera is in its canonical position that it, that is its rotation metric is identity that R, R equal to I so that the optical axis is aligned with the Z axis and then Y axis is aligned vertically. So the 2D, 3D ray corresponding to an X, Y pixel is therefore X, Y and F. So yeah, so this is the corresponding that we, <clears throat> that uh, what we get, uh, that we got that uh, the rotation metric is uh, is the identity. So we can get the uh, align Z axis and Y axis also align vertically. So we can, we can get the X, Y and F. So if you wish to project this image onto the, onto the cylindrical surface of, of unit radius, Point on the surface are parameterized by an angle of theta and h, height of h, with this with a three D cylindrical coordinates corresponding to theta h given by this equation. So we can project into cylindrical surface by this equation based on the uh, angle of theta and then uh, and then height of h. And then we can compute the formula for the web or map coordinate. Yeah, from this correspondent, we can compute the formula for the web or map coordinate. This is the formula for the for for web map. And this is uh, where s is an arbitrary scaling factor. Sometimes we call it the radius of the cylinder that can be set to s equal to f and to minimize the distortion or scaling near the center of the image. The inverse of this mapping equation is given by uh, this equation that um, we, we next to the inverse of this mapping equation like this way. So this is the uh, example for the cylindrical that uh, we need to wrap into cylindrical before we applying the any parametric motion to get more better stitching result. <clears throat> so this is the next one. Uh, previously, we already talking about the image can be uh, can be projected into the cylindrical, but image can also be projected onto the spherical surface which is useful if the final panorama include the full sphere or hemisphere of view instead of just the cylindrical strip. So this is uh, the condition when we need the spherical surface. In this case, the sphere is parameterized by two angle that we parameterize by this angle, the spherical coordinate given by this equation. So we have more angle and then we we can get the spherical coordinate by the equation 8.50. So this is the example that we need to project the image into the spherical and then we can do the, the, uh, the next process so that we can get the uh, stitching result, particularly when we are want to uh, include the full sphere or hemisphere of view. Um, as shown in the previous figure, uh, figure, the correspondent between the coordinate is now given by this equation. Uh, and then the inverse 
is given by this uh, condition. So the, we, we first compute the correspondence between coordinate, and then we can also uh, estimate the inverse based on this, uh, this, this equation. Uh, this is uh, a cylindrical paranormal that uh, for the A image is the two cylindrical web image related by a horizontal translation. And then this is the part of cylindrical panorama composite from a sequence of a image. So this is part of the of a cylindr cylindrical panorama after composed by a, a sequence of a image. So uh, this is one of the example, uh, the result of the cylindrical panorama. <clears throat> so from previous part, we already uh, talking about the image alignment. Then we are also going to talk about the global alignment. As we mentioned before, in, in some uh, condition, uh, uh, that we may need a global alignment, like what we are talking about uh, in the white document, that uh, when, uh, when you are aligned more and more pi west, uh, one of the possible good solution for dealing with this condition is by using global optimization pro procedure. So uh, this is uh, uh, the thing that we are going to uh, explain in the section 8.3. So actually um, in this section, they want to explain uh, the pairwise matching criteria uh, to global energy function that in follows all of the pair emit post parameters. And once we have computed the global alignment, we often need to perform local adjustment, such as parallax removal to reduce double image and, and blurring, blurring due to the local misregistration. And finally, if we are given an unordered set of images to register, we need to discover which image go to together to form to form one or more panoramas. So this panorama, this process of panorama will be will be described in, in this uh, section 8.3.3. So the first one for the global alignment, we will talk about the bundle adjustment. So, so consider the feature-based alignment problem given by given in equation 8.3 and 8.2, that is the the parallel out. LS is defined as we here. For multi image alignment, instead of uh, having a single collection of pairwise feature correspondent uh, of xi and x hat, uh, we have a collection of n feature with the location of the uh, it uh, feature point in the jade image denote by xij and it is color confidence and denote by cij so its image also has shown associate pose parameter so for the for the multi alignment we have a collection of n feature and it has a location of the it feature point in the in the jade image and it will be denoted by xij xij and its color confidence and its color confidence uh, will be denoted by CIJ. And in this section, we assume that the pose consists of rotation matrix and a focal length FJ, although formulation in terms of homography are possible. And the equation mapping a 3D point XI into a point of XIJ in frame J can be rewritten from equation 2.68 and 8.38 as this one. So we can rewrite the equation uh, to, to mapping the xi into a point xij as here. So this is the, the, the rewriting equation here. Uh, the k is the diagonal, diagonal metric, is the simplified form of the calibration metric and the motion mapping of Mapping point xij from a j into a point xik in frame k is similarly given by this one. So the motion, 
the motion mapping uh, then can be uh, estimating by this equation. So an alternative way to formulate the optimization is to use true bundle adjustment. That is to solve not only for the post parameter, but also for the 3D points position or XI. So uh, in this case, we can use this equation to as the alternative way for formulate optimization for the true bundle adjustment. So this is the uh, using the true bundle adjustment. And an alternative formulation is to minimize the 3D error, 3D projected ray direction. And this is for the bundle adjustment for 2D. And this is the bundle adjustment for the 3D. And for the, for the, for the 3D, the XTL here is, uh, is given by the second half of this one, of, uh, of the equation 8.59. So we can use we can use panel adjustment either for uh, 2D or 3D. And if we eliminate the 3D rays xi, we can derive a pairwise energy formulate in 3D rave space. And then uh, we can get this equation if we want to eliminate the 3D rays of xi. So the next one, we talk about the parallax removal. So when we have, once we have optimized the global orientation and focal lengths of our cameras, we may find that the image are still not perfectly aligned. That is the resulting still looks blurry or ghosted in some places. Um, this can be caused by a variety of factors, including unmodeled radi radial distortion, 3D parallax, uh, such as failure to rotate the camera around around it, its front nodal point, small scene motion such as waving through branches, and large scale motion such as people moving in and out of a picture. So uh, this is the sum of a factor which may be moving into ghosted or blurry image. So the 3D parallax can be handled by doing a full 3D bundle adjustment that is replacing the motion, the projection, which model camera translation. The 3D position of the match feature point and camera can then be simultaneously recover, although this can be significantly more expensive than parallax free image registration. And once the 3D structure has been recovered, the, the scene could in theory be projected to a single viewpoint that contains no parallax. So this is one of the example uh, of the decosting a mosaic with motion parallax. The, this is composite, composite with a parallax. And this is after a single decosting step. And then this one after multiple steps. So in this case, the image looks more sharp because we already, uh, we already uh, removed the decosting. So the final piece needed to perform fully automated image stitching is a technique to recognize which image actually go together and which brown and low call recognizing, recognizing panorama. Uh, to recognize panorama, uh, first find all pairwise image overlap using a feature-based method. And then we find a connected component in the overlap prep to recognize individual panoramas. So this is uh, one of the images that uh, we're trying to do the uh, PyroWest image. And then after that, we group it with, this, with the same uh, information. After we already group the image, and then finally, uh, we can get the individual panorama registered and then bend it to stitch it compos to stitch composite. So yeah, we first need to uh, do the pairs match for the image and then we group into the connected component. And then finally we can get the individual panorama like here. 
So this one also the example of the matching error. The, the accidental matching of several pictures can lead, can lead to match between pairs of images that do not accurately overlap. So it may not uh, accurately overlap. So that's why we, we need to matching the, the error. And this is validation of image matches by direct pixel error comparison uh, can fail when the scene contain moving objects. So um, when we are having the moving object, it, it may resulting in a failed result because uh, a moving object is uh, will resulting into different positions. So when we stitch the image, it will be uh, uh, affect the final result. Uh, in the last part, we already talking about the pairways, uh, image stitching, and then the uh, global alignment. And finally, we will talking about the last part about the comp compositing. Um, once we have registered all of the images with respect to each other, we need to decide how to produce the final stitch mosaic image. Uh, usually, this involves selecting a final compositing surface. Um, like such as flat, cylindrical, spherical, and few. And it also involves selecting which picture contribute to the final composite and how to optimally blend this pixel to minimize visible seam, blur, and the costing, uh, blur and the costing. So this is uh, the goal of the compositing that we want to get a good compo good representation of image by um, by by doing like a final touch after we do some uh, previous steps. <clears throat> so for the first com compositing uh, is about the choosing of compositing surface. So the first choice to be made is how to represent the final image. If only a few images are stitched together, a natural approach is to select one of the images as a reference and then wrap all of the other image into its reference coordinate system. And the resulting composite is sometimes called a flat panorama since the projection onto the final surface is still a perspective projection and hence strike lines remain straight which is often a desirable attribute. For larger field of view, however, we cannot maintain a flat representation without excessively stretching pixels near the border of the image. <clears throat> and for larger fields of view, however, we cannot maintain a flat representation without excessively stretching pixel near the border of the image. The usual choice for compositing the larger panorama is to use like cylindrical and spherical that we project the image into the cylindrical and the spherical before we do the uh, parameter parameter And in fact, an any surface used for environment mapping in computer graphic can be used, including a cube map which represent represent the few viewing square with a six square face of a cube. So we can also use a cube map. Um, to represent the full viewing square with a six square face of a cube. <clears throat> so this is uh, one of the thing that we need to um, understanding doing the choosing compositing surface. We need to uh, uh, carefully view selection and then coordinate, do the coordinate, uh, coordinate transformation and then the sampling, the assembling issues. For the few selections, one have chosen the output parameterization, we still need to determine uh, which part of the scene will be centered in the final view. As we mentioned above, for a flat composite, we can choose one of the images as a reference. For example, for rotational panorama, represent as a collection of 3D metrics, we can choose the image whose z-axis is closest to to every z axis. So this is a, that um, we can choose the image whose z axis is closest to every z axis. 
And for the current transformation, after selecting the parametri param parametration and reference field, we still need to compute the mappings between the input and output pixel coordinate. And in the final compositing surface, it's a flat and the in input have no radial distortion. The coordinate transformation is the simple homography. So this is uh, the condition when we use the simple homography. If the final composite surface has some other analytic, <clears throat> we need to convert every pixel in the final panorama into viewing ray or 3D point, and then map it back into the each image according to the production equation. So for the sampling the issue, while the above computation can yield the correct or fractional pixel address addresses in each input image, we, did, we still need to pay attention to sample issue. For example, if the final panorama, panorama has a lower resolution than the input image, pre-filtering the input image is necessary to avoid ali aliasing. The basic problem is to compute the appropriate pre-filter which depend on the distance between neighboring sample in source image. So as we have this, uh, as we have discussed in the previous section, previous appro approximate solutions such as MIP mapping and elliptically weighted Gaussian averaging have been developed in the graphical community. And once the source pixel have been mapped onto the final composite surface, we must still decide how to blend them in order to create an attractive looking panorama. If all of the images are in a perfect registration and identically exposed, this is, is a problem that is any pixel or combination will do. And however, for real image, visible seams, blurring or costing and occur. So in this case, uh, we need to do the pixel selection and weight, weighting or decosting. For, for doing the pixel selection and weighting, we can do like feathering or center weighting. When an image has come cut out region, down weighting pixel near the edges of both cutouts and the image is preferable. And this can be done by computing a distant map or crossfire transform by this equation where, where each valid pixel is stacked with, a, with each Euclidean distance to the nearest invalid pixel. The Euclidean distance map can be effectively computed using a two-pass raster algorithm. So we can uh, use two-pass raster raster algorithm uh, to compute the to compute the Euclidean distance map. And the simplest way to create a final composite composite is to simply take an average value at each pixel as uh, defined uh, in this equation where I till here are the red resample image and W is one at the valid pixel and zero, uh, zero uh, for the invalid, invalid condition. And one computer graphic hardware on, on a computer graphic hardware, this kind of summation can be performed in accumulative buffer. So we can perform accumulative cover on a computer graphic hardware. So this is a uh, image for the uh, image decosting. Uh, and uh, in the here, uh, after we are doing like a decosting here, we finally get the feather representation uh, like uh, we, we get in, in, this, in this figure. So this is the additional information um, that the, this is a weighted ROD vertex cover with featherings. And then this is crop cut seam with a Poisson blending and edge with a pyramid blending. So we can use uh, many techniques for the decosting and we can choose uh, any technique which can uh, uh, help resulting more, more interesting uh, mosaic picture or, or, or more interesting panorama picture. Uh, next one, we will talking about the optimal sim selection. 
So computing the foronoid, foronoid di diagram is one of the way to select the seam between the region where different images contribute to the final composite. Um, however, for the foronoid, foronoid image, uh, it, it, uh, it, it ignores the local image structure underlying the seam. Uh, therefore, there is a better approach to place the seam in a region where the images agree so that the transition from one source to another are not visible. In this way, the algorithm avoid the cutting through moving object where a seam will look unnatural. So yeah, they, there's some algorithm to avoid the cutting through. So it helps the image to look more natural. For a pair of images, this process can be formulated as a simple dynamic program starting from one edge of the overlaid region and ending at the other. <clears throat> For the last part, um, which is a uh, photo montage, uh, uh, while image staging is normally used to composite partially overlap photograph, it can al also be used to composite repeat shoot shoots of a scene that that with the aim of funding, uh, of obtaining the best possible composition and appearance of each element. So this is the photomontage example from a set of five source image. Uh, so photomontage quickly create a composite family portrait in which everyone is smiling and looking at the camera. Users simply flip through the stack and coarsely draw the stroke, yeah, draw the stroke using the design source image objective over the people they wish to add to the composite. And then the user apply the stroke and compute the region, the region middle are color code by the border of the source on the left. So in this case, uh, by doing the composite family portrait, we can get more, uh, more more interesting photos that 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 we can like uh, using the the best the best uh, the best information from the, from each from each Im from each images so then we can creating the more interesting that such as everyone is looking at the camera everyone is a uh, if a uh, is a smiling so then uh, this technique uh, also helpful for all the compositing that we can do this for the photo montage uh, uh, example. Oh, ah, yeah, so the, the, the next part, we talk about the blending. Um, once the seams between images have been determined and unwanted object removed, we still need to blend the image to, the, to compensate for exposure difference and other misalignment. The spatially firing weighting or feathering previously discussed can be often be used to accomplish this one. So we can still need to do the blending process to compensate the exposure difference and other misalignment. So we can use like a Laplacian pyramid blending. So instead of using a single transition width, a frequency adaptive width is used by creating a band pass Laplacian pyramid and making the transition width within each level of function of the level the same width Eight pixel. So this is the example of the Laplacian pyramid. That making the transition width within each pixel of function of the level the same width in the pixel. So the transition width the same width in the, the in the pixel. We can also using like a gradient domain planning, like an alternative approach to multi-band image blending, is to perform the operation in the gradient domain. And Ferris, Gangnet, and Blake in the 2003 has sh shown how gradient domain construction can be used to do seamless object insertion in image editing application. <clears throat> so this is the example of the gradient domain blending. <clears throat> so this is the poison image editing, and then poison image editing for the A image here, the dog and the children are chosen as a source image to be passed into the distant uh, into the distant destination swimming pool. So they, they select the dog and then the um the ch two children into the design uh, swimming pool. 
This is the symbol pasting fail to match the color of the boundary. And this is where as the C, poison image blending must this difference. So this is the, the, the result that the, the picture looks more blending to the, to the, to the, uh, uh, the, the, the swimming pool. Uh, the other one um, is about the exposure comp compensation. Pyramid and gradient domain blending can do a good job of compensating for moderate amount of exposure difference between images. Um, however, when the exposure difference become large, alternative approach may be necessary. So if the exposure become large, then it, it may need uh, another approaches for dealing with this issue. So this this uh, uh, this guys uh, they do like iteratively estimate a local correction between its source image and blend com blended the composite and then first a block a block based quadratic transfer function is fit between its source image and an initial feather composite. Next transfer function are averaged with their neighbor to get a smoother mapping and per pixel transfer function are computed by splitting between the neighboring block value. Once each source image has been smoothly adjusted, a new feather composite is computed and the process is repeat. So then this is what they are doing for the exposure composition. They first do the block base quadratic transfer function and then average with their neighbor to get smoother mapping and per pixel transfer function. And then, and then they do repeat it, repeat until they get a uh, better performance, mostly like uh, three times. So uh, that's all for the content of the uh, this chapter. Um, thank you very much.